Hello, in this video, we are going to see how to make a transaction between two wallets inside Golang. But before that, let's see what are the different properties of a transaction. So let's start from the first one is the from. So this is the address of the sender wallet. Next, we have to the address of the recipient wallet. The value is the amount of ethers that we are going to send from wallet A to wallet B. So the default unit is in way. One ether is equal to one and 18 zeros of way. Okay. So this value should be set as a way, not as ether. Next, we have gas limit. So this value is a default value to make a transaction inside the ethereum network if we want to make a transaction between two wallets so we have to set this value to 21,000. next we have gas price so this value is really important because with this value we can have a successful transaction or a failed transaction because if we set it too low we are going to fail to make a transaction between two wallets and if we make it too high, we are going to spend more ethers, but we are going to have a successful transaction. Okay, so later we will see how we can choose a value of this gas price. Okay, next we have nonce. So this value means number that we have to use once. So each time when we do a transaction, we increment this value by one for a default address that who never made a transaction the values should be set to zero we increment this value by one each time a wallet make a transaction okay so later we will see how we can get this value from the ethereum network okay so we don't have to remember this value and how many times we made transaction okay so later we will see how we can get this value and to get this transaction accepted by the ethereum network and mined by the miners it must be encrypted by the private key of the sender address okay so this sender address has a private key so we have to encrypt this transaction then make our request okay if another person try to encrypt this transaction with a different private key automatically the network will reject this transaction let's see an example about a transaction so let's say we have two accounts account a and account b so the account a send one ether to account b you can see how we can calculate the fees. So the total fees is the gas limit multiplied by the gas price. So here we get 4.2 million and it is equal to 0.0042 Ether. When the sender A sent money, he will be deducted 1.0042 Ether. The account B will be credited by 1 ether and the miners get 0.0042 ethers the miner is the person who will take these fees okay so let's switch to vs code and start coding okay so let's continue from the last code so here we saw first how to generate two key stores then how to get the balance of the two key stores okay so let's run this code and see the current balance of these two wallets the first wallet has two ethers and the second wallet has zero ether okay now let's see how we can send money from wallet one to wallet two first what we have to do is to create a transaction and to do that there is a sub package of go ethereum called types Okay, so we are going to use this sub package to create a new transaction. So types dot new transaction. Okay, the first argument is the nonce. 
as I explained it, the nonce is number that we have to use once. That means if we never done a transaction with a wallet, this should be zero. But each time we do a transaction with the same wallet, we have to increment this value by one. If we don't increment and use the same value, we will get an error. So now you could say that I have to remember this number each time, okay? But that is a way how we can get this nonce from the blockchain. And to do that, let's use pending nonce at, okay? So client dot pending nonce at. Okay, so the first argument is the context. And the second argument is the address of the wallet. In this case, the address of the wallet number one, A1. So this A1 is an address, so we saw how to convert an hexa string to an address, okay? This function returns the nonce and an error, so let's handle the error and pass the nonce to the transaction. Okay, so the third argument is the amount of ethers that we are going to send from wallet A to wallet B but this value should be in way and as we saw one ether is equal to 1 and 18 zeros of way okay let's transfer only 0 0.1 ether create a new variable amount is equal to big that new int we pass 0 0.1 ether that mean i copy this value passed it here and remove only one zero okay so this is equal to 0 0.1 ether okay let's pass this amount to the new transaction okay so the next argument is the gas limit and we saw that to get a successful transaction we have to pass 21,000 units by default okay so let's pass this value next we have gas price so this gas price we saw it it's super important because this will make our transaction to succeed or to fail so if we set a low value perhaps the transaction will never be mined and it will fail and if we set this value too higher, we are going to spend more ethers for nothing. So to get the average price of the current gas price of the market, we can use the function called suggest gas price. Okay, so client that suggest gas price. Okay, so the first argument and the only one is the context. So this function returns the gas price and an error let's handle the error and pass the gas price to the new transaction function okay and the last argument is the data in this case to make a transaction between two wallets we don't need to pass any data so this data is more related to the application that are running inside the blockchain for now let's set it to nil okay so we just prepared our transaction before sending the transaction to the blockchain network we have to sign it using the private key of the wallet number one okay and to do that we have to use a function inside the types package called sign transaction so types that sign transaction Okay, so the first argument is the transaction. So let's pass to it the transaction. The next argument is the signer. So to sign a transaction, we use a signer EIP 155 signer. Okay, so we can find this signer inside the types sub package that EIP 155 signer. Okay, so this is the signer. As argument, it takes the chain ID. So what is the chain ID? We saw in the previous video that there is not only one network, but many networks. There is the main network where there is the real money and there is the other networks. For example, for testing, each network has a chain ID or a network ID. Okay, so we need this ID to sign the transaction. And to get this chain ID, we need to use client.network.id. Okay, so 
the only argument that we have to pass is the context it returns the chain id and an error so let's handle the error and pass the chain id to the signer as third argument we have to pass the private key of the wallet number one so to do that we have to get the private key from the key store first we have to import our key store file we are going to use iutil.com read file and as argument we have to pass the file path okay this function returns to us a slice of byte and an error so let's handle the error first next we have to decrypt this file and to do that we use keystore.decrypt key okay so the first argument is our slice of byte the second argument is the password that we use it to create this key store okay in this case password as a result we get the key and an error so let's first handle the error we can pass now the private key using our key dot private key okay so you can see that this function is complete now it returns a transaction and an error so let's handle the error first okay so the last thing that we have to do to make this transaction we have to send this signed transaction to the covan network and to do that we use client that send transaction the first argument is the context and the second is the transaction perfect so this function returns an error so let's handle it and finally let's print the transaction hash okay so our code is complete now let's run it and see if we can make a transaction okay so you can see we first printed the balance of two wallets okay so before the transaction and next we get the transaction hash you can see this is the transaction hash let's copy it first and let's go back here to our code and comment all this part okay and now we are going to only print the two balance of these two wallets okay to see if we successfully made a transaction or not okay so you can see that we successfully made a transaction between these two wallets so the second wallet has 0.1 ether Okay. and for this first wallet the amount deducted was the 0.1 ether sent to the wallet b plus the fees okay so this was a long video so let's stop here and let's continue in the next one i hope you learned something thank you again for watching and see you in the next video bye bye